Hey guys, this is Dr. J here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top five benefits of glycine. Glycine is a powerful amino acid. It's one of the main amino acids in collagen, and I'm really excited to talk to you about some of the top five benefits that I use and I see clinically. Before we dive in, please smash that like button, give me a thumbs up, put your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on the topic and your experience using glycine. And also share with friends and family that could benefit. All right, let's dive in. So glycine is an amino acid, okay? It's gonna be found in a couple of different areas. You're gonna see it primarily in collagen or cartilaginous tissue. So we have things like collagen or collagen peptides. If you look at the main amino acids in collagen, you're gonna see glycine is one of those as well, hydroxyproline, proline, et cetera. Glycine's gonna be a big one. And so collagen, connective tissue support, bone broth, um, making soup with the whole animal in there where you get the connective tissue, the knuckles around the joints, skin. That's where you're really gonna find a lot of that glycine. So glycine's in a one, it's a powerful building block for collagen and collagen is very beneficial for skin, for connective tissue, for joints, for hair, for nails. Most people, when they get protein, they're getting muscle meat, which is gonna be higher like in methionine not as high in glycine. So most people are missing a lot of the connective tissue amino acid support. So if you can get more of the connective tissue amino acid support, that's gonna help you with joint integrity, just being able to you know, starve off things like arthritis. Remember, half of your bones are protein. Um, so you, you obviously need minerals, right? Calcium, about 12 different minerals that make up the bone. Manganese, magnesium, zinc, strontium, etc. But half of it's protein. And if you, if, when you get older, if you look at the data on people as they age, one, they tend to have less stomach acid and they tend to eat less protein. So you want at least minimum half a gram per pound of body weight. So if you're 200 pounds, that's 100 grams of protein. And if you're more active, you may want to even go up to 0.6 to 0.75 grams uh, of protein per pound of body weight. So that's really important for connective tissue, for starving off things like arthritis, keeping your skin, hair, and nails looking great. Also, glycine is a powerful building block for glutathione. Glutathione is a tripeptide, so we have cysteine, glutamine, glycine to help make glutathione. Glutathione is an incredibly powerful antioxidant. There's a lot of enzymes that are glutathione-based, so catalase is another enzyme that's really powerful that helps with um, oxidative stress, things like that. Um, really important for thyroid function, keeping your hair looking good, starving off the gray hairs. Catalase um, helps prevent a lot of the hydrogen peroxide from accumulating around the hair follicles, which can then turn it gray. So uh, things like um, cysteine and glycine, and of course, glutathione itself can be very powerful in helping support your hair and hair color. Next, um, glycine is a very important building block to make creatine. So we've heard creatine, right? Very important. It's like the explosive nutrient phosphocreatine in the muscle. So that first one to 10 seconds of explosive movement, it's gonna be primarily relying on creatine. And so to make creatine, you need three major amino acids. You need methionine, arginine, and glycine. And glycine is actually the bigger component. So collagen or glycine amino acids, very, very important to help make creatine. Creatine is very important for explosive muscle growth and performance. Um, so we talked about glycine and glutathione. So of course that also connects to detoxification. So exposure to alcohol, exposure to toxins, glycine is going to be a powerful buffer if you're exposed to toxins or alcohol or things like that. Very, very important, very powerful. Um, next, the enterocytes. The enterocytes love glycine. The glycine really helps a lot of the enterocytes repair and heal and recover. This is why you see lots of diets like the Weston A. Price diet or the GAPS diet where they really put a lot of emphasis on bone broth. Why? Because they find the glycine in there is very helpful to heal the enterocytes in that gut lining and could also be very helpful to deal with and help with gut permeability. So very, very powerful there. Let's see here, next thing. So we hit the connective tissue, hair, skin, nails. We talked about muscle performance. We talked about, um, we talked about detoxification. We talked about gut lining. Oh, glycine's very, very helpful with sleep. So a lot of studies showing it helps improve GABA function, definitely helps promote relaxation. And I would say it, there's some data on it also helping with blood sugar stability. So it helps glucose get into the cell better and not stay out in the bloodstream 
more. So as your blood sugar goes up and up and up, you know, we're going to make more and more insulin to help bring it inside the cell. So more insulin, high levels of insulin can create problems. So it helps transport that glucose into the cell better. And also as a side benefit is you're going to have improved sleep with glycine. One of the best things you can do to help promote relaxation at night is a little bit of magnesium and a little bit of glycine in some water. And that's going to really help calm you down, you know, 15 to 30 minutes before bed. That'll really help kind of chill you out. So again, five major benefits with glycine here today, the toxification, hair, skin, and nails, joints, gut lining, and then uh, of course, muscle performance. And then we added a bonus one here today, which is going to be sleep and blood sugar stability. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, that's awesome. Let me know in the comments below. Again, if you want to work with a practitioner like myself or my, and or my colleagues that work with patients all over the world to help get to the root cause of whatever your health challenges, feel free to click the link down below. We are here to help you all out. All right, I'm gonna just dive in and answer just a few questions pertinent to the topic. Let's see what we got. All right. Okay, very good. A chiropractor said that shiitake mushroom has the same amino acid as meat. Do you agree with that? Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same amino acid profile, but I mean, if you look at um, plants, the problem with plants is they aren't calorically dense. So I've, I've talked about this, right? Like you'll see people say, well, oh yeah, the, you know, the same, the, the, the kale has a very high percentage of amino acids, right? But then it percentage related to what? Calories. And then it's like, okay, well, how many calories, how many servings of kale do you have to have to match, let's say six ounces of grass fed meat? Well, it's actually 16 cups to match the same amount of protein because calorically it's just really low, right? Non-starchy vegetables are really low calorically, so you just have to eat a lot more of it, and that just makes it impractical to have that many servings of something. Now, you should have it. I mean, I think vegetables provide a lot of antioxidants. They provide a lot of um, micronutrients like magnesium and potassium. Again, they're not gonna be a significant source of protein at all. Doesn't mean you shouldn't get it, though. Even vegetarians, they're typically gonna rely on lentils and combining rice and beans and, and utilizing quinoa, and then if they're smarter, they tend to try an amino acid supplement like um, like hemp, or maybe they're going to do pea protein, or they do some kind of um, algae kind of protein as well, because it's really hard to get enough protein if you're, if you're active on the uh, vegetarian vegan side. Uh, what supplement do you recommend that has glycine? So collagen amino acids. So in my line, it's going to be true collagen. Uh, you want a collagen peptide. When you process collagen, you typically are going to get it from like the animal hide or joints. And when you process it and extract it, you typically can use sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid, or you can use um, I mean, uh, enzymes. And so when I buy these collagens in, in massive bulk sizes, we use collagen, uh, we use amino acids to break the collagens in a peptide, a peptide uh, amino acid form versus using sulfuric acid just because it's going to be, one, it tastes a lot better, it blends better. When you put it in your coffee or your water, it breaks down a lot better and there's not going to be an aftertaste. Some brands have a stronger aftertaste and that's typically because of how they process the collagen. They use typically sulfuric acid instead of um, uh, enzymes. And so enzymes are the way to go. And of course, you want to choose grass-fed, pasture-fed, and avoid uh, animals that have um, have been fed glyphosate or GMOs, kind of those kind of things. Very helpful. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's podcast uh, or today's video, actually. Click down below, put your comments below, let me know what you think.